Hi folks, shop update. I've been working on two things. Number one, five axis. I, we put out a couple of videos. Uh, I absolutely love it. I cannot believe uh, what it has done. Like completely rejuvenated my passion for making things because it's just smart. It's just everything you would want, which is I want to make a part in one setup. I don't want to have to set up a bunch of different vices and workstations to prove out the first part, but then, then go back and run a batch of five or 10. Um, it also really ties into what I love, which is that kind of programming element of CAM, of turning it into like a video game or a challenge. You do so much more in the CAM, and it really requires a lot of critical thinking because on a traditional three-axis part, you're usually, it's usually a pretty normal progressive workflow of a combination of, of roughing strategies, finishing strategies, and drilling. On the five-axis, you're really mixing that up. Like this part right here is going to turn out to be kind of an L-shaped bracket, and it'll be really thin along this wall. So I'm mixing my points of where I'm roughing out, roughing out, doing a little strategy here to open up to do a finishing strategy, drilling and tapping over here before I move over the rest of it, tabbing it off. So it's, it is just absolutely awesome. And I will say, if you are a job shop, if you're a manufacturing entrepreneur, if you're doing R&D, uh, I would encourage you to think about this sooner than even I did. Uh, when I first got into this uh, a couple months ago, I thought it was more of a luxury, if you will, like a kind of a perk, but not a necess necessity. Totally disagree now. Um, just absolutely love it. The thing I'm working on a lot is improving my five axis workflow. So what does that mean? I'm trying to get our templates built out for what our, those strategies look like with not only the tools, but also the CAM strategies. And we'll share those on the NYC CNC uh, website for the members. But I'm also trying to really standardize the tool library. It's much more important to do that here, uh, in my opinion, than on a three axis because the gauge length matters and the stick out matters. And you can see we've started to tool up the machine and we've got some different types of tools. Like I've got a slitting saw from Mari Tool. It's actually carbide. It's really awesome. Uh, and we've got a lot of longer gauge length tooling. I'll show some here offline in a second. Um, and then we picked up some different kind of tools for us. Like that right there is a three quarter inch, uh, one inch flute length, but it's a relieved shank with four and three quarter inch stick out. It's a helical tool. It is amazing what that tool can do. I am totally blown away at how much more rigid uh, something is that's a carbide solid shank, which actually does make a lot of sense. You think about a traditional end mill, even a modular or insert tool, most of the time those shanks are steel, not carbide. They have carbide options, but most of the time they're not. Being carbide is way stiffer. Solid is more stiffer than having the flutes. It's amazing. Um, we've been going a lot for now with the five inch uh, ER16s from Mari Tool. Uh, more for general purpose. I think in the future we will get more into shrink fit and hydraulic. We have a YG1 hydraulic here. It's 3 8 inch. It's not too long, but it should be quite helpful uh, and useful for those strategies. But what I want to do is I want to stop setting up tools to some extent. And uh, this was really something that my buddy Amish over at SS CAD CAM had uh, mentioned to me some time ago, which is that if he sets up, say, a 632 tap, that, that tap gets a holder with a collet or whatever the mechanism is, and then it doesn't come out. So you end up over-investing uh, or spending a fair amount more money in holders, but the time savings is huge because we're gonna use more 440 taps, 632 taps, uh, 1 16th end mills, but I don't always need that in the machine or I don't have the tool capacity. And so knowing that you've got the right tool, the right length, the right stick out, the collet is already kind of reserved for it. Uh, I think that's a trade off that's worth doing. And we can grow it over time. You know, for now we'll get maybe five or 10 extra holders and we'll have those taps set up or those small end mills or their bull nose. And we'll have them in a, a cart here. We'll keep them labeled so we know what it is. Uh, but I really like that idea of, of that workflow. We got some new relatively inexpensive shop tools that are gonna be proved to be really awesome. Uh, we got a digital refractometer because we're checking our bricks now just about every day on multiple machines. To me, it's a, it's a bit faster to do it this way and it just feels nicer. Um, and we got a really amazing microscope. This deserves its, uh, its own video 
Microscopes are an amazing tool though. And I know we've talked about them a lot on both the business of machining and various videos. And I'm excited to finally have one that I absolutely will un unabashedly recommend. Uh, and it's not that expensive. So that's exciting. Running fixture plates right now. That is for a Haas TM2. We've got one more on the machine right there. And we're running uh, spacers for our DeWalt fixture plate. And actually it was pretty nice. Jared and Josh have been running it. And these are 416 stainless. And you were saying that across this batch, it's just dead nuts. Five tenths. Yeah, like uh, across quite a few dozen or hundred of these, the machine is holding really good tolerances, which is really nice. Uh, that's kind of what you want. You want to be able to pick a job back up get it dialed in once and hit run and go. So that made me happy. We're running mod vices on the VF2. Uh, those are still done in three setups on the vertical. The thought is we may move those to the UMC eventually, uh, but for now they're happening here. And Ed is working on Johnny Five. Johnny Five is taking a little, little couple week break because we have another pretty cool project in the works uh, that you're gonna hear about in about uh, three, four weeks which is pretty exciting. But nevertheless, I think he's looking really good. And we've honestly got a lot of the bigger, harder parts done. We finally pulled the trigger on our uh, air conditioning system. Thanks to everybody who uh, emailed and sent in some help and questions. Air conditioning systems are a lot more complicated than I had originally sort of realized or appreciated. So it's been helpful to get a little bit smarter. Uh, we are going with a 10 ton dual stage system. It'll go kind of right up there. We do have to have a minor amount of reinforcements uh, done, and then it'll also heat, so we have to have a gas line and electric run to it, but hopefully that'll be installed in the next few weeks, uh, and that's really gonna be great for worker comfort, for tolerances, machine condition, humidity, uh, all that kind of stuff. So I mentioned in the beginning, I've been working on two things. The first is five axis. The second is we're getting really close to launching uh, a project that we've been working on for about a year and a half, which is redefining the way machinists consume and learn speeds and feeds information. We're gonna try to turn this industry on its head. Uh, and we've got a new website out. I'm incredibly excited about it. It's based on recipes that we know work and it gets you the information that you need to use different cutting tools, different materials, different machine tools, different strategies, uh, and to really understand it and have the confidence to run it. So the last thing we're doing is we're making a change to how we have our Amazon Web Services database architecture structured so that this site has a really good uh, response time on how you're searching through the site. So that should be done in a few weeks. What we're doing now is we've got a beta sign-up form if you're interested uh, in becoming a beta tester or getting kind of an early access to it. Go ahead and head over to that form. We'll put a card here and sign up. But that is the reason we bought the Speroni to test indicated runout. That's the reason why we've got some of these different holders and styles. You know, this is the big Kaiser high-end collet system. That's that uh, hydraulic tool holder. We want to understand things like what happens when you run a tool in different holders, different gauge lengths, different stickouts, different indicated runouts. I love this. It's like I feel like it's what I've been called to do in life, which is to take all this information I've gained over the past 10 years and think about how we can practically test things, but then also help other people in terms of how to run and cut materials. So it's been a lot of fun, a lot more to come on that. Uh, thanks to everyone who's supported and already signed up for the beta list. Uh, otherwise, we're going to get back to it. I'm excited to finish up this part, and everyone have a great weekend. Take care. See you soon.